All right, everybody. Uh, hello, and welcome to the Conveyor Technical Architecture Forum. Uh, it's, a, it's March 30th, 2022. Um, and we uh, are going to have a couple of uh, awesome talks uh, to kick us off. Um, one by Shubham and one by Savita and Emily. Uh, so without further ado, I'll just hand it over to Shubham to start us off um, talking about the change to Bolero for existing resource policy. Um, go ahead, Shubham. Thank you, John. Let me just share my screen. Uh, so let me know if I'm audible and my screen is visible. Yep, everything looks good. Okay, thank you. So hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about a feature which I'm working on upstream Valero. It's regarding enabling existing resource policy to Valero restore. So let's have a look at it. So firstly, what is Valero? So Valero is an open source tool. Many of you may, may be already familiar, but yeah, just wanted to give you an overview, which is which can be used to take backup and restore of Kubernetes cluster resources and persistent volumes. So it lets you take backups of your cluster and restore it in case of a disaster scenario. It lets you migrate resources from one cluster to another. And like it lets you replicate your production cluster to your testing and development cluster. So it depends on the use case which you're trying to use for Valero. So basically it's a backup and restore tool. So what is existing resource policy and why do we need it in Valero restore? So uh, if you currently look at Valero, it does not support any restore policy on Kubernetes resources that are already pre present in the cluster. So it skips over the restore of the resource if it already exists in the cluster or the namespace, irrespective of whether the restore, whether the resource present in the backup is same or it's different from the one present in cluster. So it's generally like desired that Valero gives the option to the user whether to override the one present in cluster with the one present in backup. So this is where the existing resource policy comes into picture. So let's have a look at the current Valero restore workflow. So let's say Valero tries to restore a Kubernetes object, we'll consider a service. So initially it fetches the service from cluster. If the service does not exist in cluster, Valero restores the service appropriately. But if it exists, it checks whether the service object in backup is equivalent with the service object in cluster. If it's not equal, it skips the restore and adds the warning. And if it's equal, then to it skips the restore and just adds a log. So this is the problematic workflow, right? Where Valero needs to act, or at least it needs to give the power to the user to decide whether to override the instance of resource of service present in cluster with the one in backup. Hence, we uh, require addition of restore policy to restore API. Let's have, a, have some look at the use cases. Why do we need uh, to update the Valero restore workflow? So first use case that comes to mind is uh, production backup cluster scenario. Let's say you have a production cluster which uh, whose backup is stored in an object storage using Valero. And this backup is used to create a backed up cluster for reference. So you can see these are identical clusters, but as it happens in real world, operations happen, uses, uses, uses of the cluster occurs and the state of the production cluster changes. And the backup is once again stored in object storage. But Valero skips over the restore if the objects are already present in the cluster. So this means that the cluster, the st cluster copy, backed up cluster copy becomes stale and it's not identical to the changed production cluster. So this fails the usage use case. That's why we need existing resource policy. Another use case that comes to mind is identification of resource delta. 
so let's say there are two clusters cluster a and b cluster a has three resources p1 p2 p3 abstract resources let's create a backup for cluster a which has p1 p2 p3 now if we perform a restore on new cluster b using backup one which has p1 p2 p3 now let's say in cluster one resource p1 gets deleted and p2 gets updated so state has changed now we create a new backup with the new state of the cluster a and keep that in mind that p2 p update p2 is updated and p1 is deleted so there is a resource delta cluster b minus backup 2 so in order to update the cluster b if we are able to identify the resource delta that would be helpful but as of now velero does not help with that so we need something which would help us identify the resource delta so if we introduce this existing resource policy we will be updating the labels as well which will let the user know that which of the objects are stale and which are not so this is one another use case so how do we go about the solution we add a new spec field called existing resource policy to the restore api so this does not change any existing behavior we try to preserve the existing behavior so for resources that already exist in the cluster and are not equal to the backed up version we add a new optional spec field existing resource policy and it can accept two kinds of policy as of now none and update and this can be extended as well to recreate if needed but that scenario is not covered in this feature as of now this spec option is also exposed via velero cli like uh, hyphen hyphen existing resource policy so types of existing resource policy which we are exposing to the user right now are none and update so let's have a look at them none is this is the existing be behavior of velero this is like preserves the existing workflow we simply skip the restoration if the resource already exist in the cluster in case of update this option would have two kind of behavior for unchanged resources and changed resources so velero would update the backup restore labels on unchanged resources if label fails velero adds the restore error for changed resources where velero will first try to patch the changed resource with the new resource with the updated resource if it succeeds then the in cluster resource get updated if it fails, it just tries to update the labels. So let's revisit the Valero restore workflow. And let's assume that the user has set update policy. So prior workflow remains same uh, till here. So considering the same example of service, uh, Valero checks whether the service in backup is equal to the service in cluster. Whether uh, if it's equal, Velero tries to update just the backup restore labels. If it's not equal, it skips the restore of service and adds a warning. Velero, but it tries to patch the service via patch. So service gets updated with backup restore labels as well as resource diff. If it fails, then Velero tries to just update the labels. Uh, I have a quick demo, short demo. Uh, just showcasing the implementation of the design. So let's have a look at it. In this example, we'll be considering uh, Ng Nginx deployment. So we'll create a backup, then we'll make some changes in the in cluster resource and try to overwrite the in cluster deployment with the one present in backup. So you can see there are two instances of deployment as of now. You just create a backup of Nginx deployment namespace. Sorry. Let's go over the demo once again. So you can see there are two pods right now. We'll just create a backup of this namespace. Let's check the status of the backup in progress. Completed now. 
Now let's try to edit the deployment. We'll change the replicas to four from two. So in cluster resource has changed, but the backup has deployment with replicas two. It should overwrite with the one present in backup when we create restore. You can see now it's four replicas. They're running. We'll observe it in the lower pane when we create restore, whether it's whether it gets updated or not. Let's create restore. You can see we are specifying the existing resource policy as update in restore. New spec. In create a restore. You can see in the lower pane that the replicas are getting updated. Restore is completed. And see, it has changed from four to two. So it it is uh, letting us overwrite. So that's it for the demo. Here are some reference links, like the design, the issue, the implementation PR is also up, almost done. And we also have some links regarding alternative approaches discussed. So thank you, everyone. Let me know if there are any questions. Are there any um, questions for Shubham? I don't see any in the chat. I, I had a question. Um, awesome demo. Um, I I was wondering when update to uh, when Valero tries to update and it fails, uh, were uh, have we considered the failure scenarios uh, in that case? Uh, like all the different types of reasons why it could fail and how uh, we could uh, how Valero will act on each one of those. Yeah, so uh, let's say uh, what we do is we try to check the diff right with the one present in the cluster and the one present in backup. So we try to create a patch. So if this patch fails, we add a restore error. So for, firstly, if this patch fails, we try to just update the labels. If that if, if even that fails, we, then we error out the restore or else if the patch is successful, then the scenario is successful, right? And if it error out, yeah. errors out, no, then what we... I was trying to say is uh, there could be multiple different types of errors. So yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. you can get a transient error, uh, which upon retry, uh, the update could be successful. Or you can get a more permanent error where the field you are trying to patch is an immutable field. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no matter how much you retry, it will uh, not succeed. Yeah, so, I, I agree. With, but those errors will be displayed in the restore, right? So the user will know about it, whether to retry it or whether to not retry it, right? Yeah, okay. and so, just to clarify one thing, um, we're, we're actually creating a restore warning there. So so if, if, if it fails, there's a restore warning, but we're not distinguishing between those cases you mentioned. So if it's a transient error or, you know, one obvious thing that could fail is that if you're trying to modify an immutable field, um, that'll always fail. It'll never, it'll never succeed. Um, so, but the code does not currently try to diagnose it. It just registers. Yeah. It logs a warning and moves on. Um, so th th that that might make some sense, maybe as a kind of a future enhancement here. Um, what we're comparing this to, and kind of the the the, the status quo that we're trying to change is the because right now what happens is Valera doesn't even bother to try. It says, hey, this thing's different. It logs a warning that, hey, this thing's different. Um, and it doesn't, it never even updates it. Um, so this is a step in the direction of, we're going to attempt to update it, one attempt. If that succeeds, we're good. If that fails, we log that warning, um, giving the, you know, the, the, the message we get. Um, but we do update the, the, the um, label because we want some, um, one of the, one of the use cases here is we want um, people want to be able to use. For example, you, you do restore one, and you do restore two. They want for resources that were deleted between those two restores of the two between the two backups. They want to be able to use the labels to say, "Hey, after we do the second restore from the second backup, we now want to delete any resources hanging around with that old restore label." Um, from the first backup um, and so that's why it's an error if we if, if a simple label update fails 
we want it to, to fail to restore because otherwise users could accidentally delete stuff. And uh, because of all these reasons, we are not even considering the regret scenario, right? Uh, right, right. What, another scenario we talked about at one point was um, to handle things like immutable fields is that, you know, kind of a, a, a kind of stronger approach here would, would be to, instead of just trying to patch the resource, delete it and recreate it. Um, and that's something we could still consider in the future, but um, that's a riskier scenario because mm -hmm. if you delete the resource and then you fail on recreating it, your restore has actually done damage rather than you know fix things because it's actually removed something yeah. that was already there. All right. So we're not even yeah, trying I, that. I agree. It, it and it makes the complications come in where that field is a cluster specific. So yeah. for example, if you're creating a service and the cluster IP is different, Valero identifies it as being different. It's an immutable field. You re delete and recreate. And this loop goes on forever every time yeah. uh, you do sure. So um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a harder problem to solve. Um, we can make uh, incremental progress. But yeah, um, I was just wondering uh, if instead of uh, one update uh, try, um, if we could uh, have a con configurable number, like let's say five uh, update tries, um it might uh push out the need for uh handling uh buckets mm -hmm. of failures um even further uh but i haven't given it i'm just throwing yeah. out thoughts yeah th mm -hmm. i think that makes some sense i i would suggest for that kind of thing th that might make sense as an enhancement I, I i kind of want to get this in upstream um sooner as soon as we can because we want it in a release um, that might make sense as kind of an enhancement later, um, just because there's been a lot of back and forth discussion upstream, and we're just trying to get it approved at this point. Um, but I think the adding yeah, the retry okay. um, does make sense as, as something to consider, you know, as a future enhancement here. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Awesome demo. Thank you. Cool. Well, thanks, Shubham. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, Emily and Savita are going to tell us a little about a data mover that they're working on for ODP. Yeah, and uh, I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Emily, and I'll be presenting with Savita. We both work on OEDP, which is an OpenShift operator that backs up and stores applications. And as of today, OEDP does currently support CSI snapshotting through the Valero CSI plugin. However, on some providers, these snapshots only exist locally on the cluster. This presents a challenge for us in the case that the cluster is deleted or a disaster occurs, then we are not able to recover these snapshots. So we have come up with a data mover design and this is going to help overcome, help overcome that challenge and that we will use it to back up and restore these snapshots from a remote location such such as an S3 bucket. And we just wanted to point out that the scope of this design is limited to CSI volume. So our main goals for this data mover is to one, create an, a data mover solution. We want to supply a default data mover option, which will be using full sync, more specifically the rustic data mover that full sync has. We want to supply APIs for data mover CRs. These will be data mover backup, data mover restore, and data mover class. And Savita will go more into depth on these CRs in a couple minutes. And we also want to supply a sample code base for a data mover plugin and controller for third party implementations. So, I guess third parties can come in and use these code bases to kind of create their own data movers. 
And then our non-goal will be to maintain these third-party implementations. And now I will turn it over to Savita to talk more about the components of the state mover. Thank you, Emily, for going over uh, the summary and providing a little bit of detail about the data mover. Uh, the requirements, the reason why we need it, the requirements and what are we trying to achieve in this design. So before we uh, dive deeper into the details, I want to highlight that data mover, this data mover design has a couple of components. One is a data mover plugin, another one is a data mover controller. The data mover plugin will be responsible for creating a data mover backup and restore CRs, which has information about the uh, PVCs or the volume, the snap volume snapshots that we would like to, the user would like to move uh, to the uh, remote location or restore it from the remote location. And the controller has components uh, to, to con uh, the Demo controller uh, has two controllers within it. One is a backup controller and a restore controller, which is going to act on which 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 will act on the CRs uh, which was created by the uh, data more plugin. The reason why we have it this way is like if you remember that Emily mentioned, one of the goals was to have an extensible design. So this will uh, let you bring your own data mover plugin, bring your own data mover and uh, controller and plug it into the design. So that's the reason that we have it um, as a separate component. And um, uh, we'll see a little bit more in detail on how these are gonna work together. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the uh, first thing is that um, the data mover plugin is going to, uh, when a user says like, okay, give me a backup, uh, I want to take a backup of uh, this uh, snapshot. Um, and uh, the data mover plugin will create a data mover backup CR. In this case, it will have the name of the um, the volume snapshot uh, that the user wants to move. And it will also have a reference to something called as a data mover class. And uh, the data mover class is like, uh, um, it's an API which has a spec field called mover where you can specify which data mover that you would like to use for this particular uh, backup. And, um, and it also has additional information um, that can be used in the future to um, identify which uh, volumes needs to be moved by a certain type of data mover and which needs to be moved by a um, different type of data mover. Um, so this uh, data mover, um, um, the it could be the default one, which in this case, like Emily mentioned, it could be the uh, wall sync one, or it could be the one uh, that the vendor brings. And if this will feed into the controller, um, so based on data mover, you will have controllers, the back controller and the restore controller, which will have uh, the necessary uh, functionalities uh, that is related to that particular data mover, and it will act on the data mover backup CR and uh, try and uh, take the snapshot move it to the remote location specified. And uh, for the restore, it works in the reverse order. Like it will uh, take the uh, snapshot from the remote location and um, restore it in the uh, cluster. So this is like the overall high level uh, detail of the this particular design. And if you are interested, uh, to learn more about it, we have linked uh, the uh, PR in the um, agenda items. So feel free to take a look at it. And um, I'm gonna stop now and uh, I'm gonna um, ask like if anyone has any questions, comments, please feel free to ask us, let us know.
All right, well, I guess no questions. Uh, Savitha, Emily, thank you. I think it was pretty clear what you presented. This definitely could be good stuff. So very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and if you are interested, we are also working on a POC. So um, um, soon, soon, soon or later, we will have some kind of uh, demo. So um, if you want to learn more about it, feel free to uh, ping the ODP uh, team and the Slack channel, or just tag us, and we'll be happy to walk through more about it. And thank you, everyone. Thanks, Emily, for being my partner. Yeah. Thank you. So before we wrap up, does anybody have any other topics they want to bring up or anything else to discuss? All right, well, thanks, everyone. I will upload this recording to YouTube probably later on today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.